Welcome to this Innova Systems web snippet on equation-driven curves. In SOLIDWORKS, I've got a very simple 2D sketch on the front plane consisting of a dimension centerline. What I want to do is add to this uh, some equation-driven curves. Now these can be found either under Tools, Sketch Entities, Equation-Driven Curve, or slightly more quickly, under the Spline tool in the drop-down we have Equation-Driven Curve. Now, an equation-driven curve, the menu consists of two sections. What type of equation is it? And then the parameters box. Now, the equation type is either explicit or parametric. So, explicit allows us to set an x-value as our parameter and then drive the y-value with an equation. Parametric allows us to do exactly the same thing, but we can drive two equations from our parameters. And if we're in a 3D sketch, we can drive three, three equations from our parameters. So, I'm going to start with a, a nice and simple explicit equation. So we're going to go from x equals 0 to x equals 10. And over that period, we're going to drive y as 0.5 times x. And that gives us a straight line. And as x varies between 0 and 10, y varies between 0 and 5, half of x. Uh, and that's shown quite nicely in the preview as this is halfway up our center line. Now, what's quite nice about the equation editor is if I, for example, forget to put in my uh, multiplication symbol, the equation goes red, so it's telling me straight away that I've made a typo. If what happens is I type in uh, a correctly formatted equation but that it can't give a valid curve, then up here the message changes to discontinuous curve or, or cannot solve. Now, a lot of the time when I'm doing a model, I like to make sure I've got some driving dimensions and everything else is built from those driving dimensions. We can do exactly the same with equation-driven curves. Um, what I can do is I can take my existing parameters and I'm going to change my equation and if I change it to x times, now I can't click on the dimension uh, as I can in the standard equation editor, for example. But what you can do is put in the dimension name uh, surrounded by speech marks, the same as it would appear in your equation editor after you clicked on a dimension. And then I'm going to divide that by 10 as well. Now, what I've done is I've taken uh, the value x times it by uh, 10, my dimension, and then divided it by 10. Now, because x is 10, essentially I end up with a line which is the same length as my dimension. So, if I take this line and I now make this 5 rather than 10, we can see my center line changes length, obviously, but so does my equation-driven curve. So, very easily, I can now build in uh, intelligence into my model and into my equation-driven curves. Now, so far, we've looked at some pretty simple curves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a slightly more complicated curve. Uh, this is going to be between 0 and pi because I'm going to be looking at something that's uh, along a waveform and we now get half of a wave here. Now very quickly I can take this, I can revolve this shape, I know it's open so I'm going to leave it open and we get a dimple. So very quickly I can turn my equation driven curves into solids. If I come into this and edit the sketch what I'm going to do now is turn this from just a single dimple into a series of ripples. So I click on the equation driven curve to edit it. Now this time around the equation is uh, a little bit longer. I change x up to 10 because although I'm still looking at curves I'm going to want more than a single or half a waveform. And just give me a second to type in the full equation. Now what I've written here uh, x little top hat symbol 2 uh, is essentially x to the power of, so in this case x squared. And what we get now is essentially uh, a series of decreasing uh, waves uh, which are slowly tending to zero. If I come out of this and allow my revolve to rebuild, and if I flip that over, what we have is essentially something that could look like a series of ripples in a pond. You've thrown the stone in, and we've got a series of ripples. So you can turn your um, sketches very quickly into quite complex geometry. And it's, a, it's still a spline, your curve, uh, hence why it appears under the spline tool. But because it's got an equation behind it, it's defined. It's got a mathematical answer, if that makes sense, um, to the curve. So we know we've locked it down, which means that it's easier to edit and easier to control. If I tried to create this shape, for example, with a single spline, it would have taken ages and it would be very, very um, flaky. 
uh, you'd be very easy to drag part of your spline and for the rest of it to all change shape in a way you're not expecting. Now we've had a look at some explicit curves here. What I want to do is I want to show you some uh, parametric curves. So I'm going to suppress this. Uh, I'm going to create a new sketch on the front plane and input uh, equation of a curve. We're going to choose parametric. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be able to uh, drive both X and Y based on T. So we're going to choose a value of T between 1 and 5. And then I'm going to enter the equations. And this gives us the uh, the arc we see here. Now, I'm just going to add some additional uh, entities to this sketch. Again, I'm putting some center lines in because I'm going to want to revolve this. And if I come out and choose to revolve, again, I know it's now it's open. We're going to revolve it around there. And what this equation does is it's the hyperbolic equation that people use when they're designing valve seats. So as we can see here, we've now got the bottom of a, of a piston, for example. Now, the interesting thing about this uh, particular equation is if I decide to use the other center line I created, uh, it's the same equation that's used when designing the bells on trumpets and brass and woodwind instruments. So it's an equation that's got real life uh, uses as well as uh, looking relatively pretty on my screen here. Now I'm going to suppress my trumpet and now I'm going to show you some 3D um, equations. Uh, again, we're going to be using equation driven curves. Now because I'm in the 3D sketch, I only get the choice of parametric, but I do get an additional dimension that I can put the equation in under. So again, if you can just bear with me while I put in some uh, values. And the shape we get out of this is a nice smooth standard waveform. We're looking at X and Y. But when we look for the top, we just get a single wave. Uh, and that's based on the equation we put in as the Z factor. Uh, and overall, we sort of get a slightly strange shape. But if I just finish this off and then uh, turn it into a filled surface, you can see we get a surface out, which really the only word for it is frilly. Um, but because it's put in using an equation driven curve rather than uh, a freeform or a restrained spline, it's very repeatable. It's easy for me to edit and still guarantee that all of the waves are the same height and same size, um, which just shows how controllable uh, the equation driven curves can be. Now, the final example is uh, another 3D um, sketch. And what this is going to do is this is going to provide us with a spherical helix. So there we go. What we get out of this is, as I said, a spherical helix. Um, now this would be a bit of a pain to create via any other method. Um, but it's a very nice shape that I could sweep along if I need this as a spring shape, for example, um, or if I'm designing the support for the inside of a lampshade. Um, what's also quite nice about this is, although it's very defined, what we can also do is quite easily change it. So if I change this up to 20 um, and allow that to rebuild, I'm very quickly changing the size and shape of my um, sphere. In this case, it's a bit gone a bit flattened. Um, if I flick that back, um, the 10 on the other end is the equivalent of the number of um, revolutions. So if I change this up, change this down to five, uh, bear with this, it looks a little bit weird until it's fully rebuilt for both equations. Um, you can see very quickly what happens is we've changed the number of revolutions from 10 to five, um, which shows the power and like I say, the editability of uh, equation driven curves. Thank you very much for watching.